Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to do the Unit 2 Chemical and Physical Changes Lab. We are here in my uh, kitchen lab, and I'm going to do a series of demonstrations for you and walk you through um, just little small demos, and you are going to observe and determine whether the demos I am showing you are the chemical or physical changes. So there's questions embedded in the lab. You should have your lab up, and of course the link you have um, clicked, and now you're watching this video. So I'm gonna go in order, and then you'll be able to pause as needed so you can fill in your answers. So before we do any lab, as always, safety goggles on. Okay, and we are gonna start with experiment A, the antacid tablet. So what we are using is an Alka-Seltzer tablet, of which you need to observe. Number one says observe the tablet. So I am going to bring it over to the camera. And as you can see, it is round, not that thick, it's about the size of a quarter. All right, it says that I am to break it into pieces. So I'm going to put it in this watch glass here. And as you can see, I have broken it into pieces. Okay, so our next step says that we need to put it in a cup. I'm going to use a beaker. And you see our beaker right here. I'll dump the pieces in. And then I am going to take the 50 milliliters of water that I've already measured out. And I'm going to add those together. Okay, so let me bring it around there so y'all can see what's going on. You can see there's some fizzing action. You can see that there's still a little bit of those tablets in there. But they are disappearing rapidly. That plop, plop, fizz, fizz. See the little bubbles coming off? Releasing something. I'm not gonna say what, that's up to you. You don't have to be specific. Okay. So for that demo, it says that you are to observe what happens and you need to tell me whether it's a chemical or physical change. You were supposed to do that for number one when I broke the tablet into pieces. And now that I have added the water and it's doing what it's doing, you need to um, tell me again. And when I'm finished, it says to empty the cup, which I'm using a beaker and rinse the cup for the next experiment. Now, in the lab, if we were using like chemicals, you wouldn't be able to mix them in a dirty beaker like that, but that was just alpha seltzer so. All right, our next one is the experiment B, which it says part one, because this one's gonna be split into two parts. All right, it says that you need to place one ice cube in a cup. All right, so I am actually going to use our watch glass again, because it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see it. Okay, so the watch glass, you guys learned about these in the unit one. Let me grab an ice cube out of the freezer. One ice cube coming up. All right, so observe the ice cube. All right, putting it into our watch glass here. And it says record the appearance of the ice cube, which I just showed you. So if you need to back it up, do that. And this is to set the cup, which I'm using the watch glass, on uh, to the side until we are finished with the other experiment. So I'm going to lay it over here for now, and we'll come back to that. All right, experiment C, baking soda, baking soda, and lemon juice. All right, it says with the graduated cylinder, so let's pull our graduated cylinder back out. It says to add 40 milliliters of lemon juice.
Okay, 40 milliliters of lemon juice. All right, it says, add one teaspoon of baking soda to the lemon juice in a large container. Okay, so we're gonna use the larger beaker this time. And it says to add one teaspoon of baking soda to the lemon juice. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lemon juice in the large container. Okay, and it said that we need one teaspoon. All right, so I'm gonna come over there to the camera so you guys can see this because it says, describe what happens when the baking soda was added. Is this a chemical or physical change? So let me come around there. And you can see this a little bit better. Let me get my, and in fact, I'm gonna dump this into because I'm going to be over my computer doing it and I don't want this to go all over my computer so there's my one teaspoon of baking soda and now I'm going to add it to the lemon juice Are you ready Let's see what's going on in there We've got some bubbling action again You see inside, I don't want to tilt it too much because then it'll be all over my computer. But you can see we got some real bubbling going on in there. It's rising. All right, to make your observations, put them on the sheet. You can pause it if you need to. It's going to take me just a second to um, rinse this out. So maybe you won't have to pause it. In fact, you might even need a fast forward it. Don't know. Okay. So those are rinsed out. Moving on to the Play-Doh. Okay. Play-Doh is next. It's this is experiment D. Remove the Play-Doh from the container. Play-Doh. Moving the Play-Doh from the container. Let's see. Looks like a little cylinder because it's never been taken out of the container. Okay. Uh, describe how it looks. Okay, it feels squishy. I can squish it into shapes. Y'all know what Play-Doh is. Describe the smell. Don't know how to describe that except for it smells like Play-Doh. I mean, Play-Doh has that distinct smell. If you've never played with Play-Doh, please go get yourself some Play-Doh and play with it over this pandemic. Okay. So it smells like Play-Doh. Um, break the Play-Doh up into many small pieces. Okay, I'm gonna use a knife for that. Okay, so I'm cutting. I'll show you guys what I'm doing in just a second. I'll bring it over there, but I am just cutting this Play-Doh up into little bitty pieces. Like we're gonna share it with the class and I'll have a piece for everybody. And then you can make a tiny little Play-Doh uh, uh, creature or something, whatever you want to make out of it. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so it says that I am to break it up in small pieces and observe, observe and record the change. So remember what it looked like to begin with. And now what I've done to it, oops, there it goes, right on the computer. Luckily, it's just Play-Doh. Okay, that's our Play-Doh. So go ahead and type in your answers for that while I put my Play-Doh back into the container. And then you had to answer, is it a chemical or physical change? Okay, so Play-Doh's back in the container. Now we are at experiment E, baking soda and vinegar. One teaspoon of baking soda to a clean container and use the graduated cylinder to measure out 10 milliliters of vinegar. So let's get our vinegar ready. So 10 milliliters, that's not a whole lot. Okay, and it says we need a clean container. Let me just wipe out the water from this one that I used earlier. 
Okay. And we add one teaspoon of baking soda to a clean the container. So let's put our baking soda in first. One teaspoon into the clean container. Okay, and it says using graduated cylinder, we got our vinegar, and we need to add the vinegar to the baking soda container. Describe what happens when the vinegar was added. Is this a chemical or physical change? Okay, coming around. You see our baking soda's in there. My vinegar's in my graduated cylinder. Let's add it. And one more time, we got that bubbling action. Wish y'all could smell it. it. Smells like vinegar. Some people hate vinegar. I actually like vinegar. Not as exciting as a lemon juice, though. But you still got a similar reaction. So go ahead and answer your questions for that one. Okay. Empty the container and rinse the container and graduated cylinder. So let me do that while you guys are filling in your answers. Pause if you need to, but I think this is gonna take long enough to where you probably have enough time to put your answers in and you might even be waiting on me. All right, we are at experiment F, milk and vinegar. Using the graduated cylinder, measure out 50 milliliters of milk. Okay, I already kind of got close to 50 milliliters. I just put some milk in a small beaker. But let's make sure, because remember our graduated cylinder is more accurate than using the beaker. Actually, well, barely, but you know what? It's close enough for this lab. See, that shows you I did 50 milliliters here. It's not quite to the 50 milliliter mark there. If we were in the lab doing something with real chemicals, you would definitely need to add a little bit more to the graduated cylinder, but I think this is good for this particular lab, so we're all right. But that just shows you again that the beakers are not as accurate as graduated cylinders. All right, using the graduated cylinder, measure out the milk and add it to a container. Okay, so we're gonna add the milk to this container here. And then we gotta measure out 30 milliliters of vinegar, vinegar out of this same graduated cylinder. So let me give this a rinse. Okay, we need 30 milliliters of vinegar. Vinegar. Okay, I went over a little bit, so I'm gonna dump some of this out in the sink. If this was a real chemical, you would not be dumping it down the sink. It's vinegar, so it's okay. Not to say that vinegar is not a real chemical, but you know what I mean, like a caustic chemical or something that we were using in the lab that came out of a bottle with a, you know, some kind of safety regulations attached to it. All right, so we got to describe what happens when the vinegar was added to the milk. I'm going to walk around here. I'm not sure. I've never done this one before, so I'm not sure what to expect. All right, so here's your milk. Adding the vinegar. See a little bit of bubbles. Oh wait, look what's going on on the side of the container. We're getting pieces, which actually makes sense. You know what we're doing? We're curdling our milk. That's kind of causing a precipitate, which is when you get pieces that solidify in a solution. Don't think I want to drink that milk anymore. If you know anything about kitchens and, and working, if you need like buttermilk for anything, this is the way they say to make buttermilk. If you don't have any on hand, like for a recipe to make biscuits or something. Okay. They actually tell you to add, it sours the milk. 
and then it, it acts like the buttermilk would and then you put it in the recipe and supposedly it's, it will taste the same. All right, so describe what happens when the vinegar was added. Is this a physical or chemical change? Let's fill that part in. All right, we got one last one. Don't think I need to rinse this one right now because I've got this extra one here and since we're on the last one, we're okay. All right, so this one's still got water in it. So let me dry that one out. All right, it says that we're gonna add one teaspoon of Kool-Aid powder to a jar. Well, in this case, we're just using the beaker. Using the graduated cylinder, add 60 milliliters of water. All right, I need to do that ahead of time because this is only a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, so I'm gonna have to add water to it twice. Let me get the vinegar out. All right, so that's 50, I need to add another 10. All right, so that makes about 60 milliliters of water. We need one teaspoon of our Kool-Aid. Open my Kool-Aid pack, don't worry. Um, I found some old Kool-Aid, this is actually expired. Uh, I found it in the back of my cabinet, so it's not like I'm wasting Kool-Aid. I know that's like, oh my God, I can't believe you just wasted Kool-Aid. We could be drinking that. It's actually kind of chunky. I'm sure it probably would be okay because it is just Kool-Aid powder, but you can tell it's kind of... All right, let's see if we can pour out. I'm gonna pour out one teaspoon over top of this so I don't get it everywhere. Okay, so it says one teaspoon of Kool-Aid powder to the jar using the graduated cylinder, add the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my Kool-Aid, here's one teaspoon of Kool-Aid, I'll come a little closer so y'all can see. Okay, Kool-Aid, I think it was cherry or black cherry or something. All right, so I've got my Kool-Aid in the jar or in the beaker. And then it says add the water at the same time. And I'm supposed to gently shake it, but I've got my stirring rod. I'm going to modify this a little bit. So we're going to add our water. Okay. And I have a stirring rod right here. Almost has a blood color to it. I hate to like mess y'all up for life on Kool-Aid, but this concentrated, this is a very concentrated Kool-Aid. Looks like something you would make for a Halloween party or something. All right, so as you can see, let me see if I can put the light up to it. I'm not sure if I can get the light close enough. I have a lamp. Let's see what we can do. I'll allow y'all to see through it. I don't know if that helps. That's just blinding you. Yeah, that's not helping much. Um, I can tell you though that I'm not seeing any pieces in it anymore. Yeah, it looks like it is. All the little powder pieces are gone. Okay, so go ahead and fill in. Um, is that a chemical or physical change? And our last piece, back to experiment B with the ice. We have our ice cube over here. Um, look at the cup that held the ice cube from experiment B. Describe the appearance of the ice cube. Let me bring that around so you can see. All right, I'm trying to get it out, but it's slippery. All right, so there's our ice cube. Is it very slippery because, hey, look what's happening to it. And you can see drip. That was not on my computer, by the way. Drips again. But let me show you what else we have in this container. That was on my computer. All right, well, anyway, that was water because a lot of that ice cube is no longer a solid. Okay, so. 
you have a discussion question there that you need to answer. And that is it for our uh, kitchen chemistry lab today. So please complete the lab and submit it on time. Thanks, everybody.